So let's talk a little, little specifics here on the issue of the Affordable Care Act and what, <coughs> what changes we're looking at, what that might mean, and, and I think we have to acknowledge up front that all of this is subject to activity in Washington that's going to affect uh, uh, decisions that Minnesota makes. But with that caveat in mind, what does it mean to say that we might be looking at changes in the Affordable Care Act? I'll start with you again, Representative Dean. We'll, we'll go around the table again the same way here on this issue. Sure. Well, federally, both the House and the Senate in the uh, U.S. Congress has said that they're going to defund Obamacare, and that's going to be their top priority. Um, so that is going to happen. That will happen. It will be <coughs> repealed. It will be defunded. Uh, I, I don't think that there's very much debate about that, um, even from the Democrats federally. So the question is, what does that mean for us in Minnesota? Uh, if you just say we're going to just kind of hook up a, a rope to the plumbing of how this thing gets funded and rip it out and wait for three years, that's not a good solution for Minnesota because in Minnesota we have really done well. Uh, and historically, you know, if you look back uh, to 2008, um, we had, uh, we had uh, in health care in Minnesota, Kids could be on their parents' program and t on their health insurance policy until age 25. Uh, we had a program for people who had uh, health conditions that made them uninsurable. Uh, we had a program for people who didn't make very much money so that they could get subsidized health insurance and pay a portion of their premium. And if you look at all of the metrics of Obamacare, including having five choices for plans in the majority of counties in the state, we had met every single metric. We were very high quality, the highest quality in the country. We had some of the lowest percentages of uninsured, and we had very, very good value for cost. So we had met those metrics. They say, well, how are we doing now? In the majority of counties in the state of Minnesota, we have either no choice or one choice for health care policy in the individual market. That's simply not okay. We saw a 67% increase in individual health insurance policies this year on top of a 50% increase last year. So we now have families <coughs> in the individual health insurance market that are paying $2,000, $3,000, even $4,000 per month for health care that doesn't touch their needs. So when you're talking to a family who's paying $40,000 a year in health insurance costs before they see a penny of health care come to their family, uh, we're in a real crisis, so this is not something that we can wait to uh, address. And what's happening in the individual market right now could transfer into the small group and uh, larger group markets and self insureds So Minnesota is really at a point where we had more to lose than any other state from Obamacare, and right now we're in the soup and losing it. So we were the first to jump into this experiment. We need to not be the last state to get out. And so what I've said to my um, uh, friends in our federal delegation is uh, we can't wait to figure out what you're going to do. Uh, we need to get out in front of this thing, and we need to do things the Minnesota way, uh, and please don't hold us back from that. So we're going to need state innovations. Uh, we're going to need this do this the Minnesota way, and we need to stop being <coughs> punished for being the best state in the country for health care. Right now, for every dollar we put into uh, the Washington, D.C. for health care, we get 56 cents back. Uh, Louisiana and Mississippi get over $2 back. So we can't continue down this road when middle class Minnesota is in such a vice. Uh, it's simply not sustainable to say that we're going to tough it out for another couple years or pick up the slack if the federal government just cuts funding uh, for our state-based program. So we're in a position where we can lead the country uh, on uh, ideas that actually do work and have a proven track record of working, uh, but not if we're chained to these federal re regulations. And that's why I don't think we can wait for the federal government to tell us what to do. I think we need to lead and start asking for uh, maybe forgiveness or permission or whatever we need to do, but we need to move quickly as a state. Well, you know, we have this ac action taken by Congress, but uh, there's no alternative. You know, the Republicans in Washington have not provided or proposed an alternative. And so what, what does that mean? Uh, are we still going to be able to uh, ensure that our, our uh, young adults up to age 26 are covered under their parents' plan? 
Uh, are we still going to uh, uh, ensure that uh, uh, folks with pre-existing conditions uh, are going to be covered by their plan? Uh, right now, there's going to be 30 million people nationally uh, that are thrown off of health care that they have uh, received uh, uh, under this plan. And so what about them? Uh, I know that in the past, uh, uh, the GOP uh, has uh, made deep cuts to Minnesota care, which has affected many people uh, uh, who have no other option. So the key is, how are we going to make sure that folks who need health care are covered? And uh, my worry is that we're going to continue to throw off people uh, who are in need of health care, working people, uh, people that need that uh, um, e extra bit of support uh, in order to, uh, uh, to to see a doctor. You know, unfortunately, we have folks going to the emergency room uh, to get uh, you know to get checked out for a sore throat. That is the least cost effective way of providing medical care. And we have so many people uh, that are in that situation, so they need. Uh, some kind of option, some kind of public plan uh, that will make sure that their um, uh, needs are taken care of. So we don't have alternatives. We just have a lot of noise, a lot of criticism, but ultimately we have to make sure that people who need health care are covered, and uh, that's going to be, you know, one of the, uh, the issues that we're going to debate, I think, very vigorously here in the Minnesota legislature this year. Senator Chamberlain? Uh, well, uh, Representative Dean was correct. We had a system that was working in the state of Minnesota. It was working. Most people in the state were insured. We had plans and ideas to increase their access to quality health care, but that was thrown out the window with the baby in the bathwater. So we had a system that was working, and they destroyed it. We had to get back to what was working where people were insured, where we had affordable care, and they had access to affordable quality care. Um, what we have done in the last six years is destroyed that. So we can get a plan, as Repres Representative Dean had said, we can get a plan, we can do this the Minnesota way, we can get this to work, and we can get Minnesotans covered at a much lower cost with access to high quality care. There is no question that this experiment with ACA Obamacare and Minsure has been an utter disaster. People have died. They can't get to clinics. They don't have choices. There's no options. And we discussed this at length during the debate in 2013. So we have plans. We can get this done. We can fix this. And Minnesotans will be much better off as they were before on the Minnesota plan. <coughs> Well, we'll probably have an opportunity to discuss this in more detail as we go along. Thank God I'm not a health care committee. So the specifics, uh, specifics I'm sure, are going to uh, be the subject of some conversation.